may be sitting. If you're turning your Bibles to Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, I want to speak to you about why you should develop your prayer life. Why you should develop your prayer life. There are three dimensions of prayer that were given by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. That's why this particular message and this study we're going to do tonight is so significant, so important to your Christian walk. Look at Luke 11 and 1. It came to pass that as he was praying, Jesus is praying in a certain place. When he deceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. Now look at verse 9. Jesus said, and I say unto you, ask it shall be given unto you, seek, and ye shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Now, there are more people that are asking that question that are Christians than any other question, how do I develop my prayer life? I've had people tell me, I, I prayed five minutes and I told, every God, told God everything I had to say. I said, I can pray for an hour and say hello to God. I know the names of God, eight compound redemptive names, and I can just start quoting those names off, and, and I can spend one hour saying, Hello, Father. So it's important that you know how to pray. It's important that you know how to pray effectively. And these three dimensions of prayer, they came as a direct result where they said, Lord, teach us to pray. And Jesus responded to that request. And in the text that I read, he mentions three prayer worlds or three dimensions of prayer. Now, we know that Jesus was a man of prayer. The Bible says Jesus was praying in a certain place. And when he finished praying, his disciples, they came to him and said, Lord, we want to know how to pray like you pray. We want you to teach us how to pray because we see how effective your prayers are, Lord, teach us how to pray. They say, we see God answering your prayers, so teach us how to pray like you pray. You know, this could be the greatest request that the disciples ever made, because we all need to know how to address our Heavenly Father, how to go to Him in prayer, and, and how do we get answered prayers? I have enjoyed 40 years of answered prayer. So I believe I can teach on this subject. That's what I plan to do tonight is teach a little while. Now, today we approach our Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus. Look at John 16, 23. Jesus is talking to his disciples. He said, and in that day, He's talking about when I have returned to the Father. In that day you shall ask me nothing. Truly, truly, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. So he's teaching us how to approach the Father with a prayer of petition. In John chapter 14, I'm not going to speak on that tonight. He says that anything you ask in my name, that will I do. That is not the prayer of petition. That is the command of faith. And signs and wonders follow them that believe. I'm not going there tonight. I just want to tell you, this is the prayer world where you ask the Father, where you go to the Father. When we stand to pray a prayer of deliverance, it's in the name of Jesus, be healed. We cast out devils in the name of Jesus. We don't pray to the Father. You do all of your praying in your prayer closet, getting your spirit man prepared to stand up in the place of Jesus. Because he said, I'm going to make you an ambassador for Christ. And you're to go out and beseech people in the name of Jesus. that They be reconciled to God. And we have keys and we have authority in the church. But that's not my subject tonight. So in the world of prayer, we must be taught how to approach the Father. How to speak. When to speak. And when not to speak. My subject tonight, why you should develop your prayer life. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the dynamic presence of the Holy Spirit and what we have enjoyed here. And, Lord, we thank you that prayer changes things. We thank you that it changes us. 
It puts us in touch with you. It purifies us as we pray your word and as we study and as we read and pray out the scriptures, Lord. Your scriptures are full of life, full of healing, full of power, full of glory. So, Lord, illuminate our hearts and minds tonight and show us why we should develop our prayer life each and every day of our life. And the church said in Jesus' name, amen. They tell me that you're supposed to have three points in a good sermon. I have eight. So I, I'm not going to be long on any of them, but I just want to give it to you the way the Lord has laid it on my heart. Point number one, your success as a Christian depends upon your ability to pray. Your success as a Christian depends upon your ability to pray. And if you don't know how to pray, guess what? You will always be a weak Christian. And you will always be unsuccessful in what you try to do for the Lord. Your prayer world and your prayer life determines what you will do in God's kingdom. God doesn't want you to be weak. He wants you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And the Bible says, they that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Now, you've got to know this. You have an enemy called the devil. He's your adversary, and he hates prayer. He hates anybody that will pray, and he'll do everything he can to keep you from praying. The devil is afraid of prayer because when you start to pray and get in touch with God, he knows you're on a mission. You're coming out of that prayer room clothed in the anointing of God and that you're going out to destroy his works. And so the devil, he doesn't want Christians to pray. And he does not want Christians to understand the power of prayer. You must learn to pray. And you have to learn to pray from your heart, from the inner man. And that's how you commune with God. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And if you're going to commune with God, I'm not talking about praying in the Holy Ghost tonight. That's not what I'm teaching about. I'm talking about praying to God and knowing how to approach the Father and how to get answered prayers. If you really want to know how to pray, get around people that know how to pray and learn from them because prayer is more caught than taught. That's what Jesus' disciples, they had been around him, and they saw, hey, this man knows how to pray, and God is answering his prayers. So, Lord, we want you to teach us how to pray those effective prayers the way you pray. They called the spirit of prayer from Jesus. You know, they didn't have the Holy Ghost. They were casting out devils. They were healing the sick. Wonder where all that anointing came from. They were drawing their power from the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I'm going away, and when I do, I'm going to send the Holy Ghost, and he's going to give you the power. I'm with you now. He's with you, but he's going to be in you. And see, the Holy Ghost brings the Spirit of Christ into our life. The great mystery that had the devils known this, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And then the Holy Ghost comes to dwell in you. He said, the Most High doesn't dwell in temples made with hand. Heaven is his throne. Earth is his footstool. He said, has not my hands made all these things? And then he said, you're special. You're chosen. You're the temple of the living God. As God has said, I'll walk in them. I'll dwell in them. I'll be their God, and they'll be my people. So get in your Bible and learn how to pray the scriptures and learn how to pray effective winning prayers. Jesus prayed, and his disciples, they caught the spirit of prayer. Hallelujah. Lord, teach us to pray like you pray. Just like Jesus produced disciples that were prayer warriors. A pastor should produce disciples that are prayer warriors. God told me, I've been praying for years for a prayer team, and it's growing. God says, I have given you a powerful, Holy Ghost-filled prayer team. So I'm looking for more than I've ever seen in my life because this church, God is calling us to prayer. And we're inviting the presence of the Holy Spirit. And we're just going to 
sit back and do what God told us to do, and we're going to watch the Holy Ghost do what only he can do. Amen. I want to stop right here. Sister, if you would come on up here, Sister Patsy Whitney, Whitney's mother. <laughs> i get her name right in a minute. <laughs> Amen. I have the hardest time with that. Henson, yes. I want to tell you, this is our second testimony. We had a testimony. She wasn't here this morning. But guess what? She told me the other night about her back being healed. And we heard Sister Kay Rouse say, and that's because of prayer and inviting the presence of the Holy Spirit. What did the Lord do for you? He healed my back. Uh, I have had uh, rheumatoid and osteo. Uh, arthritis in my well it's all over my body but for the past 20 years I, my back has increasingly began to to hurt I have been bathed in prayer through the years I've been through a lot of healings uh, but you have to say when you are prayed for uh, I don't care what it looks like I don't care what it feels like I'm healed if you believe the prayers that are prayed over you and you walk in it and you claim it well uh, Sunday night when he said if you need healing come up here to the altar well I was probably the first one up here I made a beeline I just knew it was my night to get healed so I came up and I was praying and asking God to, re to restore the strength and energy in my fingers and uh to heal the arthritis thing, to straighten my fingers out. Well, nothing happened, but I still kept believing. Well, I got up Monday morning, and I'd been up about 15 minutes, and I realized my back's not hurting. And then I thought, God, you healed my back. You didn't do my hands and fingers, but you healed my back. Because I was getting ready to get dressed, and every morning when I dress, I have this rub that I put on my back, which allows me about two hours to do things that I need to do in around the house, and then my back would start hurting, and I had to stop and rest till the pain leaves. So I worked all day long, and no pain. Now, I knew Satan was going to try to come and steal it from me. And, it, and later that afternoon, I began to feel that ache come back on, and I claimed my healing, and I said, let me tell you something, devil. You didn't give me this healing, and you're not taking it away. So I got up Tuesday morning, and I thought, now, God, this is going to be the real test because I've got to vacuum. And, and I, I have to stop two or three times just vacuuming one room because the pain in my back gets so bad. But I got up. I vacuumed the floors, the area rug, the woodwork. Then I scrubbed and cleaned those floors. And then I put a finish on them. And I worked hard all day long, and I have not had any back pain. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Look what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. I tell you, God is a great God. So your success as a Christian, point number one, depends upon your prayer life and your ability to pray. Point number two, Jesus said there are three prayer worlds. You know, prayer is great. Prayer is wonderful. I, I love my prayer time. Friday night is special to me, even though sometimes I'm just giving out. I want to get here and be with my brothers and sisters of like precious faith, crying out to God and welcoming the Holy Spirit into our services. Point number two, Jesus said there are three prayer worlds. Luke 11 and 9, Jesus said, And I say unto you, ask, it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. Ask, and ye shall receive. That's the prayer world number one. Seek and ye shall find. That's the second prayer world. Knock and it shall be open to you. That's the third prayer world that Jesus talked about. These are three separate, specific areas. These represent three dimensions of prayer. So as we pray, we can go from one dimension to the other dimension. The story of your prayer life is the story of your success as a Christian and your walk with God. Point number three, the first prayer world is asking, it shall be given unto you. Now, in the book of James, it said, if you lack, any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. See, this is the prayer world of asking. He says, you have not because you ask not. 
Jesus said, asking you shall receive. Now, this is the primary prayer world. This is prayer world number one, is the beginning prayer world. So you could call it the infinite, no, you know, infant prayer world, the child, the, 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 the prayer world of the child has first been born again. When you're converted, asking for God, asking God for things is always correct. Well, it's always correct to ask God, but when you're first born into the kingdom, all you know to do is ask. But it's the pra baby prayer world. It's the beginning prayer world. When a child begins to learn how to speak, the first thing a child learns to do is to ask for something. You got a child, you know what I'm talking about. Give me, give me, give me. So it's just normal. It's normal in the natural world, and it's normal in the spirit world. The asking world of prayer is the world that we should understand better than any other world. Ask, and you shall receive. Jesus said so. So Jesus said that, and so if he said, asking you shall receive, this prayer world is never to be despised, yet it's not the deeper prayer worlds that Jesus spoke of. Some people say, oh, I asked God for too much. I've had people tell me that. Or I've already asked God, and he didn't answer my prayer. Well, this prayer world is never to be despised. It's a necessary prayer world for all of us, but it's not the ultimate prayer world. When we're born into the kingdom of God, the Lord says, ask, it shall be given unto you. So when we ask, we are obeying God's specific command. Look at John 16, 23 again. It's what Jesus said. He's going back to the Father. He said, in that day you shall ask me nothing. Truly, truly, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it. The Father is going to do it. That's a prayer petition. This is the elementary prayer stage, and we know that, but we ask in order that we may receive. And in the first stage of being born again, that's about all we know. That's it. And we have to grow into the other dimensions of prayer. As we grow in the Lord, we should never forget this prayer stage because the Father wants us to ask him simply because the Father wants to answer our prayers. And Jesus said that I want you to ask. And if he said ask, it's always in order to ask. But don't live out, don't live your life as a Christian in the asking world. If everything was in the first prayer world, Jesus would not have mentioned the other prayer worlds. Point number four. The second prayer world is seek and ye shall find. Now, if you could get everything by asking, then Jesus would not have said, seek, and you shall find. There are some things in God you just don't get by asking, and you've got to know that. And a lot of Christians, they dwell and live in the first prayer world. Jesus told us that there are some prayers that only answered by prayer and fasting. He came off the man of transfigurations, and a man came to him and said, Jesus, I asked my disciples to heal my boy of this demon spirit, but they couldn't. He said, it throws him down, and Jesus said, bring him to me. And when he did, that spirit threw him to the ground, and Jesus cast the devil out of him and healed him. Well, Jesus, a man of prayer, had been along praying, so he knew how to pray. He knew how to pray effective. His disciples now, the world today would tell you, well, the disciples prayed, so it must not have been God's will to heal that little boy. Well, Jesus said, bring him to me. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said, the works I do, they're not my works, they're the works of the Father that sent me. Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost. Jesus was full of power. Jesus was full of anointing because Jesus knew how to pray. And his disciples were so embarrassed they didn't ask out in front of everybody. They waited until they got in the house. And they said, Lord, why couldn't we heal that little boy? Jesus said, this kind goeth out by nothing but by prayer and fasting. So Jesus is showing them these dimensions that he's talking about. Jesus was a great teacher. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the second prayer world is the world of seeking. Hallelujah. You know, it takes intelligence to seek. 
It takes intelligence to ask properly and to approach God properly. You have got to approach him the way he says. There are prayer, there are laws that regulate the world of prayer. And I can't get into all that tonight. Now, a two-year-old baby can say, give me some milk, right? He can ask for the milk. But if you said, go find your own milk, that baby would just give up because he knows nothing about seeking and he knows nothing about uh, looking for something. All he knows to do is ask, give me, give me, give me. They're a baby. And all a baby understands to do is to ask. But when you move into this second dimension of prayer, then you learn to seek God. And when you do, you will seek God for bigger things, for better things, for more than you could get before because you're growing in grace and knowledge. You're growing in the world of prayer. And when you are seeking him, it, it shows that you are truly seeking to know God and to grow in God. And God loves that. He wants us to seek him. See, there are dimensions in prayer just there, like there are dimensions of power. You know, the lowest dimension of power is physical power. Above that is mental power. And above that is moral power. And above that is spiritual power. And you can't have spiritual power without moral power. You got to have a body to live in, amen. You got to have a mind to think. You have to have a willpower to decide. And so you have to use all that God has given you to move in on God and develop your spirit man. I, I, I tell you, I, I walk into business meetings I used to, and I would say, Lord, when I walk in, I don't want them to see a six-foot-tall man. When I walk in there, I want the, my spirit to go through the roof of this place, about 20 foot tall. And I'd go in there, and they'd be cursing, calling God's name in vain, and they'd stop. Why? Because of the power of God I said, I want your presence and your power to go before me. The plant manager one day was in there, and they called God's name in vain, and I walked in. He said, I'm sorry, Jerry. I didn't know you were in here. Isn't that amazing that people know who you are? People know the dimension that you walk in God. And guess who else knows it? The devil knows it. Paul I know and Jesus I know. He said to the seven sons of Sceva, that devil did, but who are you? Amen. Tell them your name. Say, I'm a child of the Most High God. My name is John Doe, and I'm here on the Father's business. Hallelujah. And I come to cast you out, establish God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. You just got to talk what the Bible says. You know, it's only when a man moves in on the spiritual level that they have power with God. It's only when God move, man moves in a spiritual level that they have power over unclean spirits. I guarantee you the devil knows who you are. He knows what you can do and what you can't do. I got a little saying, when the devil knows that you know, he knows he's got to go. I, I called my, I heard Cooper Peacock tell that story about A.A. A. Allen. And uh, R.W. Schambach was sick. And A.A. A. Allen said something, whispered in his ear. And Shambach was instantly healed. And he said, what did you whisper? He said, I, I whispered to the devil, this is A.A. A. Allen. The devil knew who he was, left instantly. I, I called my daughter, all four of them in that family had COVID. I said, put me on speakerphone. I said, you're my seed. They're my ch grandchildren. And that's my, my son-in-law. I said, hey, devil, this is Jerry Reed Nelson. You know who I am. In the name of Jesus, I come to cast that demon power of COVID-19 out. You go in Jesus' name. Every one of them was healed. Hallelujah. Tell the devil who you are. Let him know. I'm in charge here, devil. You're not in charge. God gave me this home. This is my home. You're not running this home. You're not going to ruin it, and you're not going to run it. I'm in charge. God put me in charge, and I'm taking my position as the head of this home, and I'm going to do what God sent me to do. I wish the church could just wake up to some of these things. They, they cower down afraid of the devil when he's afraid of you. 
I said, he's afraid of you. Hallelujah. Be filled with the Holy Ghost and be refilled. And, you know, if a Christian, if we just live on an intellectual and a moral level, a moral plane, we will never have power with God. We will never be able to cast the devil out. It takes the power of the Holy Ghost in your human spirit anointing you. And when, once, once the devil realizes, I, I, I say it like this. I say, when I get up in the morning, I want the demons to scream down the horrors of ho the, the corridors of hell. Hey, devil, he's up again. He's up again. People say, don't talk about the devil like that. Aren't you afraid of the devil? I said, no. If I thought it's behind the door, I'd kick it down just to see if he was there. You've heard me say that hundreds of times. What am I to be afraid of? Whether I live, I live unto the Lord. Whether I die, I die unto the Lord. Whether I live or whether I die, I'm the Lord's. And if I die, I just take the shortcut home to glory. And I'm not going anywhere until God says, hallelujah. I've had a lot of battles with that devil. And if you think it's just going to tiptoe through the tulips and get through this thing without facing him, your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And I'll tell you something else while I'm on the subject. If he can ever back you down in one area, he'll back you down in all the other areas. Take your position in Christ and tell him, hey, you stop. I'm not going to back down to this. I'm not backing down to that. People say, you are sort of a matter-of-fact man. You better believe it. Because if the Bible says it's a matter-of-fact, and that's just the way I'm going to live. People say, why can't you just be like other people? Well, I'm like Jesus the best I can be. And I don't want to be like some people that can't, can't get a prayer answered. I'm telling you, this, you have an enemy. and You better learn to fight. and You better learn these prayer words because if you don't, you will always be a weak Christian. So the dimensions of prayer, they're very, very, very important. Look at Jeremiah 29, 13. God said, you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. He said, you got to do some searching. You got to read your Bible. You got to pray. You got to talk to the Father. You got to approach him right. Approach him with reverence. But once you get into that dimension of seeking him, He'll let you into the secret place where all things are possible. See, the treasures of this world, such as gold and of silver, diamonds and oil, they're not found on the top of the ground. You have to search for them. They're found in the riverbeds. They're found deep down in the heart of the earth. And one of the things that causes disappointment in prayer is that Christians Many of them, they never move from the primary prayer world of asking. They never go into the other stages. And so they don't get what they want. And they don't get them simply because they have missed the second prayer world of seeking God. Seek, Jesus said, and you shall find. See, we should be seekers when it comes to spiritual things. Look at Matthew 6, 33. This is one of my favorite scriptures. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his rights, holy living. A lot of people, they, they said, oh, I saw God, and they live like the devil. You know, like one man said this morning, you can't shack up and expect the devil to pay, expect God to pay the rent. You can't shack up with somebody and expect God to pay the rent. That's pretty good, isn't it? But we live in a world where people want to do what the world says. No, God says, no, 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 no. You'll do what I say. And if you don't do what I say, you will suffer. When God says, do this that, and don't do this, that's God's way of saying, don't hurt yourself. Help yourself by walking into the dimensions that I've created for you. Look at Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you have to diligently seek God. It would not be fair, and God is a God of justice, if I sought God 
and some other preacher was hot shot preaching, had a great vocabulary, and he had human charisma. And if, if God answered his prayers, and, and and you know, and he didn't answer my prayers, and I sought God and sought God and sought God, and that man's going off his human ability, it would be very unjust if God answered his prayers, and just because I didn't have the talents, the gifts, and the ability, and that human charisma to draw people to me, God would be unjust. If, if I sought him and he didn't answer my prayers. So God is no respect to person. But at the same time, God does expect us to seek him. He said, you must believe in an invisible, unseen God. That, that's, that's faith right there. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. You got to believe in a God you cannot see. <laughs> Uh, but I tell you, once you're born again and you've been touched by the hand of God, you don't have to see him to know he lives. He lives. Hallelujah. He lives within my heart. Woo! Glory. He's in me and I'm in him. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And I saw my oneness with Jesus Christ right there. Father, I pray they may be one, even as we are one. I and thou and thou and me, that they may be one in us. There's omnipotence in you. Seek and praise God and turn it loose. Amen. So when Jesus said, asking you shall receive, seeking you shall find, he was talking about something far more exciting than just asking. Now, if I were to tell you that before we came in this church tonight, that I hit a $100 bill under one of those chairs and find us a keepers, what do you think would happen to this church? People would get to looking for that $100 bill, and they would start trying to find that $100 bill. That's what you call seeking. They'd flip these chairs up. There's a hundred, it's not a $100 bill in there. I started to do it. I said, Lord, they'd tear the church apart. You know? But, see, that's what we do on the natural plane. But why don't we do that with God? I mean, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ever ask or think according to the power working in us. God is a good God. I, I love my salvation. Hallelujah. You know, the mention of seeking is far above the dimension of just asking. Point number five, the third prayer will. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. You know, there's a beautiful painting by Hoffman that hangs in St. Paul's Cathedral in London, England, and Jesus is standing at the door, and he's knocking, wanting to come in. There's a place in prayer that is different from any other dimension of our prayer. And Jesus said, if you will knock, this dimension shall be open unto you. So that brings up the question, where do we knock? Well, you knock on the door. You don't knock on the window, you knock on the door. Because Jesus said, I am the door. So you go to Jesus, and that's where you do your knocking. You go to the Word of God. He is the Word. And you search the Scriptures. And you learn about Jesus. You learn about your Heavenly Father. You learn about the Holy Ghost. And, and the more you learn, the greater your prayer life will become. You learn other dimensions of prayer. You move in on God and to where it's a constant thing with you. Well, we have to go work. We got to do something. But, you know, I learned how to, re I trained my brain that every 15 minutes, I might be talking to you. But guess what? I'm talking to him. I'm locked in on you. What you, would you say? I'm sorry. I was just talking to the father. I, I've trained myself every 15 minutes. I'll quote a scripture. I'll memorize them. And, and I say them over and over to myself. I'm talking to my father. I'm, I'm building up my spirit man. 
I'm building myself. I pray in the Holy Ghost. Don't even have to pray out loud. I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, building up my most holy faith. People say, you can't pray at will. If you're full of the Holy Ghost, you can. How, why would that be in the Bible? Build up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. If God didn't give you the ability when you're full of the Holy Ghost to pray in the Holy Ghost at will, why would he put that in the Bible? We got some preachers preaching some stuff. They need to get full of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And they'll be able to pray in the Holy Ghost. I had one preacher, and I had great respect for him. He said, you can't pray in the Holy Ghost anytime you want to. And I'm thinking to myself, and I just let him go on with his sermon. I said, you might not can, but that doesn't mean I can't. I pray anytime, praise God. All, all I got to do is start praying. And I'm over there. Hallelujah. If you're full, you're full. If you're not full, get filled. Hallelujah. Amen. I wanted, I wanted to talk to God so much, and I, I went and talked to my mother. I'd been filled with the Holy Ghost. Couldn't get a word. Couldn't get a syllable. And, and at about 7 o'clock at night, and she said, well, after she explained everything to me about me praying, I, I'm brand new. I don't know about what the Bible says about praying in the Holy Ghost. I said, Mother, I got so many problems. I need to be able to talk to God in the spirit, spirit to spirit. I didn't know what the Bible said. I just knew what the Holy Ghost was telling me. And she finally, she said, son, let's pray. She put those little bony hands over my hands and started praying. The power of God jerked her back. And when she jerked forward, I was slain in the spirit. I woke up. At 3 a.m. in the morning, singing in tongues. Everybody in the house had gone to sleep from 8 o'clock, 7 or 8 o'clock to 3 a.m. Whether in the body, out of the body, I don't know. I just know one thing. From that moment to this moment, all nine gifts of the Holy Ghost have worked through my life, and I've been full, 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 and, and I've had a prayer language, praise God, and, and God has been good to me. I needed that power, and guess what? The whole church world needs it. We'll turn this world upside down in Jesus' name. Go and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you'll knock, Jesus will open the door. He opened it for me. <laughs> but see, knocking is the ultimate prayer world. I believe that worship is the highest form of prayer. In this prayer world, we minister to the Lord. And we move into a state of worship where we just magnify God like we did for one solid week. We didn't ask the Holy Ghost to heal anybody during that time. We asked him to come. We wanted his presence. And we believe in praying for the sick. But we need him. And, and we will worship him. We just break out in songs sometimes. Just sing unto the Lord. So the highest form of Prayer is worship. You don't ask God for anything in this prayer world. You don't need to. You're, kn you're knocking. You're there. You've got him. You don't seek for anything. You don't have to ask for anything because you already have his presence. And in his presence, that's where the miracles happen. Isaiah knew this prayer world. He saw the throne of God. Daniel knew this prayer world. And God sent angels to minister to him. John knew this prayer world. He was on the lonely Isle of Patmos, got in the spirit on the Lord's day, and God ministered to him. He saw Jesus. See, this prayer world of adoration and praise, this is, knock, it shall be open unto you. That's a place in the prayer world of knocking. You will never get things by asking and seeking. God knows the thought and intent of our hearts. And when he gets your heart, guess what? He has all of you. Amen? In this prayer world, you don't ask God for anything. You don't seek him for anything because you have him. That's why I'm a praiser. You've heard me say it a hundred times. When praise leads the way, victory is on the way. Hallelujah. So you enter this prayer world, you're not asking, you're not seeking. You already have him. You've not. And he has opened the door to you. Point number six, the truth of the three prayer worlds is this. 
I want you to see this. When a person is born again, they're born into the first prayer world of asking. As they develop, they move into this second dimension of prayer, and they become seekers, and they begin to search with all their heart, and they let the Spirit lead them and flow out of them. And you become a full adult Christian in this third prayer world of worship and praise, and your total life is hid with Christ in God in this world. He allows you to enter the secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler, from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover me with His feathers, and under His wings shall I abide. And the devil dare not go there into the secret place. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Surely He shall. Do you see it? I shall say, He shall do. I shall say, He shall do. I'm in the secret place. I, I'm, I'm full. Hallelujah. I shall say, and Father shall do. What will I say? I'll say what he said in his word. I'll say what he said, and I'll say it with boldness. Why? Because I am who God said I am. I have what God said I have. I can do what God said I can do. I've been seeking him until, I, and, and finally I got into the place of adoration, and I'm dwelling in that secret place. Point number seven. The story of our lives is really the story of these three prayer worlds. When a person backslides or denomination backslides, it backslides through the prayer world. When a church is born, it is born in the primary prayer world of asking. As it matures, it goes into the second prayer world of seeking. And then it goes into the third prayer world of worship, which God loves so much. Even Jesus said, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Father seeketh such to worship him. Father wants you to come. Hallelujah. If a church backslides, it will backslide down through the prayer worlds. They will first stop praising God. They'll stop clapping their hands. They'll stop their worship and magnifying God. And all the presence of God will soon disappear. Then in the second prayer world, they will stop seeking God. They'll stop asking God for more and more. They think, well, we've got everything. Jesus wrote to a church like that said, to the layout of sin church, says they are rich, increased with goods. They have need of nothing. He said, that's their opinion. But my opinion is this. They're poor. They're wretched. They're miserable. And they need my presence. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. How many of our churches today is God knocking, wanting to get in through the world of prayer? I go to the camp meetings. I've been on the prayer team for over 20 years now. And I watch the preachers come. I watch the preachers go. I watch what is done with prayer because I know how important it is. And we will never have a revival in the International Pentecostal Holiness Church until we have a revival in prayer. I'll say that again. No one, International Pentecostal Holiness Church, Church of God, until we have a revival of prayer, we will not have a revival. There will be little churches and there will be little pockets that will seek God. And God will raise up a church. And if he has to raise up another denomination, he will, he will go into the cesspools of sin and iniquity. And he will find him a people that will love him. How do you know that, Pastor? How can you be so sure? 
Jesus said, I will spew you out of my mouth because you make me sick. You have a form and a fashion. You have left your first love behind. And he said, return to me with all your heart. And if you don't, I'll choose me somebody else. I know people don't like preaching like that. Don't bother me a bit. I'm a man on a mission. And it doesn't bother me because I'd rather please God than please man. And I don't even care if they take my credentials. They will still fail if they don't start praying and seeking God. It's just the way it's the word of God. That's the word of God. And nobody can change that. Hallelujah. <laughs> so people backslide down through the prayer world. You can go to their churches. They're dead. There's nothing any deader than a dead Pentecostal church. Well, you go expecting the presence and the power of God. I go into some of them. I don't even want to go there. I feel the, when I walk in the door, I feel a depressing spirit come over me. And I leave there shaking myself. So, oh God, I'm glad to be out of there. And it's the house of God. And they've got a form and a fashion. And they're twice dead and don't even know it. And they're good people. They need somebody to go in there and light a fire. Hallelujah. So our lives are the same personally. Our prayer life is. When you backslide, you stop praising God. You lose your joy. You lose your dance. You lose your song. You stop seeking and asking. Then one day you just stop asking God. And all these three prayer worlds, they are important to the church and to your walk with God and our individual walk. Point to me, Pastor Ricky. God desires that we pray. When the Bible says to pray and fast, we should give ourselves to seasons of prayer and fasting. I'm so thankful for this church. You don't know... As a pastor, how thankful I am. We, we announced 21 days of prayer and fasting at the first of the year. And most people participate in that. And we give you four ways to fast. It's not a law that says you've got to fast. It's saying if you want more of God, we're going to make fasting available. And we're going to fast corporately. And we're going to believe God together. There are many attitudes of prayer. And we can live in all three of these prayer worlds at the same time. We can worship God. We can praise God. You can slip out of one prayer world of asking and you start seeking God and say, hey, Lord, I want the gifts of the Spirit. I, I, I want you to use me in a greater measure. I, I want this gift or that gift of the Spirit. I, 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 I want to see you in action, Lord. Fill us with your glory. You can live and move in all three of these dimensions because Jesus said there are three prayer worlds. Look at Luke 11, 9. Jesus said, I say unto you, ask, it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock. This is God's promise. It shall be opened unto you. Can you imagine your heavenly Father with both his hands open like that and saying, come my child, come spend some time with me. Come alone into the secret place and let's talk. I want to talk to you about what's going on in your life. I want to talk to you about your disappointments. I want to talk to you about your heartaches. I want to talk to you about what your body is going through. I want you to come because I made a way through my son Jesus. And I've given you access to come to me. And I promised you in my word, you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I have great things I've planned for you, the Father says. Will you come and spend time with me?
Will you search for me? Because if you will, I promise you something. You'll find me. And you'll be able to pray prayers for your family. You were never able to pray before. You'll be used in my kingdom like you never imagined before. Because I've given you a promise. Asking you shall receive. Seeking you shall find. Knock. And it shall be open unto you. Can you see the Father's hands? When he opens his hands. Let us stand. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath. Yes, Lord. In our lungs. Hallelujah. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's Lord, your help me. In our lungs. Help me, Lord. So we pour out our praise to you only. You're worthy of all our praise, Lord. Help me to go through the dimensions of prayer till I'm in your presence. I don't have to ask for anything. You just open your hand. Your hand of bounty to me, to my family, to the church, to those you send me to, Lord, that I can take your presence. You give Holy life. Spirit, we love you. you Fill us. We love. need you. We need you. We need you to teach us, to lead us, to guide us, to empower the darkness, us. darkness, you give hope. You restore. Oh, God, as we worship you, pour out your miracle working power. Hallelujah. Broken. Glory. Hallelujah. And great Glory. are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. You oh, what a gift you have given us as treasure. In our we have in earthen vessels. Hallelujah. The excellency of the powers of God and not of us. Hallelujah. It's your Glory. breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath. Yes, Lord. In Every breath we lungs. breathe. So oh, we pour breathe on us, Holy Spirit. To you breathe on us, Holy Spirit. Breathe on us. Give us a wind from elsewhere. A wind from elsewhere. You to blow out life. the musty smell of religion. You are love. Glory. Woo. You bring light. Hallelujah. The darkness Glory. you give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Lord, teach us to pray. Great Hallelujah. Are you, Lord? Teach us, Lord. Hallelujah. It's your breath. Glory. In our so we pour out our praise. Hallelujah. We pour out our praise. It's Lord, your Lord, this breath. is a church with people that love you. Pour out your spirit. We teach pour us. Out Lord. Our praise. Hallelujah. We pour out our praise. It's your breath. Lord, we want more of you. More of your presence. So we pour out more of your praise. glory. We pour Hallelujah. out our praise. Glory. It's your breath. 